Hi everybody, George Shurikan over here, founder of Lightzone Data. Welcome to the Lightzone Data show. Uh, I, it's amazing to be here at the uh, Big Data and Analytics West Summit. What what a vibe and atmosphere. I gotta tell you, I can't believe how many people are here. I was like, right. I'm not the only data nerd out there, so <laughs> here we come all the way to Vancouver. There's lots of people here. I was surprised, surprised at the energy. It's been a great event so far, that's for sure. Well, and uh, I have to say the way you led the morning breakfast with the round table discussions, that was very engaging. Yeah, it was an amazing kind of breakfast event. First, yeah, my family doesn't eat breakfast with me, so they don't even <laughs> want to talk to me. And I have like 70 people in the room, and we brought up like challenges that I've seen or mistakes that I've made and kind of seated the tables for them to have their own discussions. And I think we learned from each other. That was yeah, the cool yeah. thing when you bring a community it, together, right? For sure. It, it was reassuring to see that we were all kind of in the same boat, regardless of the industry, regardless yeah, yeah. of the size of the company. And uh, we all have uh, some issues with our data foundation that we, we have to get issues. ready <laughs> for us to benefit from AI yeah. as well. Yeah, right? I agree. I think and that's it is about prepping for this journey because there's one thing I said there and in my speech, and that is bad data in, bad data out. And it just gets exemplified when it comes to agents, let alone generative AI, for sure. let alone traditional analytics and machine learning. So for sure. Yeah. So I do want to then go into your session. Not only was engaging, I mean, Paul, I mentioned to you before, I've seen a couple of your presentations that. online, but being in person and seeing that energy and the delivery and everything, oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Very yeah, kind. I'm, very I'm kind. looking forward to your next one as yeah, well. Yeah, excellent. So, uh, uh, Paul, the session, which is aptly called Fueling Reliable AI, Unlocking Your Enterprise Data. 100%. I mean, that spoke to my heart. I'm yeah. a data management professional as yeah. well. So putting that focus on data, as I mentioned, is crucial. Yeah. Let's start with the semantics first to make sure that we're all on the same okay. page. To IBM, what does it mean to be reliable AI? Yeah. And why would it matter to have that data fuel it? Yeah, I think reliable AI goes on a number of different tenets, right? Uh, lineage, right? What data was used to train. There's really two levels of that. One is what data was used to train your large language model. To be honest, if you go and ask most of the vendors that come to the top of your head, they'll tell you it's none of your business or they don't know. And so there are a few of them, I'm proud to say IBM is one of them, that has special bespoke models where we know the training data, Yeah. right? So I think that's one to start with. It's like if you were making a glass of lemonade, do you want clear water or do you want it, some water that you can't see inside it, right? So uh, I say that it, one model doesn't rule them all. I think we'll use a mixture of models. It's okay to use models where you don't know where the data came from to train it for creativity and big things, but maybe I want another smaller language model that's built on data I trust. So that's number one. And that would be lineage, where did it come from? Uh, the other is it has to be robust, right? So it has to be safe. And we talked in my keynote there about data poisoning attacks, prompt injection attacks, and those types of things. So it has to be explainable. Why did you make that kind of decision? And then it has to be monitorable. So think mm -hmm. about as AI, the moment you put AI into production, it starts to drift and right. get inaccurate. Those four tenets help you kind of get the way for reliable AI. And of course, data is, is the sauce, as we say. For sure, yeah. for sure. So you've touched on quite a few things there and in your session and what I've seen from the discussions as well. A lot of organizations, again, are, are struggling with uh, the foundations and they're also putting a lot of effort in getting their, their data AI ready. Yeah. And there's a few hurdles, right? There's you have uh, data quality issues, you have uh, access issues, mm -hmm. uh, silos, just to name three of the things that I, yeah, I, of the I heard. Yeah, right? yeah, of the hundred, yeah. exactly. Now, what are maybe some of the actionable takeaways or advice recommendations yeah. that you have for organizations, for CDAOs, for CDOs yeah, yeah. to tackle some of these challenges? For sure. You know, I think it's actually not going to be as technical as you were hoping for. I think the number one challenge is to remember that technology is easy, culture is hard. And, uh, and I hit on this every time I talk yeah. about it because it's right there for you. You just have to have a discipline and you have to have leadership. And I always say culture is what happens when nobody's watching. Yeah. And the way we usually approach governance and data explainability and lineage is a least effort to comply with some kind of regulation. In yeah. other words, we measure CDOs and others uh, with a, did you get fined as their KPI? I don't think that should be their only kind of measurement. Mm -hmm. If you flip that little bit, mm -hmm. we'll approach this problem differently. And as I said, when you invest in governance, it's an accelerant for AI. So those who want to get going and they feel they're behind in AI, get your governance in order, it'll, it'll get going real fast that way. Beautiful. So that would be the number one thing I would say. Beautiful. Hey, and I love those two takeaways. First, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, underlying everything and then investing in governance. Yeah. Data governance, AI governance. Again, that speaks volumes to me. And thank you so much for that. Yeah. Uh, you've also touched on uh, retrieval. 
and not only just to have one, but kind of combine multiple ones as well. Uh, can you speak a little bit about that? Please? Yeah. So you look at the modern way that most people are uh, going to AI, they load some documents in and do RAG, right? Retrieve augmented yep. generation. Uh, but when we do that, we leave it up to the vectorization of the data. That mm -hmm. works for one document. I showed that. I think I had my knee report and I asked to explain it to me like I was Taylor Swift fan, which I am, by the way, <laughs> but also hard rock, but good for Taylor Swift anyways. But what happens when you get real enterprise problems? So in traditional data in RDBMS, we handle this with foreign primary key relationships. We put referential integrity. We link data and documents and business rules. And then we go and we give it to uh, a RAG structure, we give it to a vector database that forgets it all, and just tries to guess on Euclidean distance that they match. And so the proposition that I gave forward were there's two things with RAG. One is, how do I create derivative artifacts that keep these connections together? This purchase order is linked to this customer number. That's going to give you more accurate. And then how do I maintain uh, my security, because in the database, I have all these security controls, they'll get lost when I give it yeah. to the vector database. Yeah. And then suddenly the agent that I build on the other end has to say, you're not allowed to see this data. So let's go capture this stuff. Like I, I like to say like, we've solved these problems before. Why do we come with AI and forget all the good work we've done? Let's mix them together. And that was the point of that one. Yeah. yeah. So Paul, you've showed us some really cool examples in your presentation. Can you share with our audience one example from the real world on how they benefited from this. Yeah, like think uh, UFC, if you're a mixed martial arts fan and the way that they do fan engagement and uh -huh. that experience is built on the very concepts that I talked about today. It's built with multiple models, right? It uses a model like IBM Granite where you can fully see the data it was trained on and it uses a Llama 3 or Llama 4 model, which I don't know that data, very powerful model. It brings that together with a good uh, lake house infrastructure to uh, grab the data and do fan engagement. And that recipe, to share with you is you're seeing that on display in golf at the US Open, in tennis at Wimbledon or the US Open in tennis. So it's this repeating pattern that we've perfected about yeah. bringing all these components together. So that's probably my favorite one is UFC because I think it's, where did you expect IBM to be in the ring? You didn't, right? right so there right. you go. You know, I've seen some of these demos that he had in a um, past event and got a chance to play foosball and table oh, tennis yeah. and had the whole tracking activity. And yeah. then all the analytics that you get out yeah, of it amazing. and then the real world application yeah. that you had with the soccer teams yeah. and the tennis and yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, the data is just data. So whether I'm trying to recommend you a song, understand how good of a ping pong player you are, I heard you're pretty good actually. But whether it's that or whether it's even reducing the clinical documentation burden that mm -hmm. hits all of our healthcare. Think about a healthcare system, how slow, how expensive it is. And yet when you go to see your doctor, they spend 15 minutes with you and they might look at you for a minute because they're taking all these notes. AI could assist there. So it really doesn't matter what the data is about. Yeah. Every single industry is affected by AI. And I like to tell people, I grew up with blue collar jobs and white collar jobs. All the jobs now, they're new collar jobs because mm -hmm. AI is part of it from the boardroom to the boiler room and all parts in between. So that's where I think that's Beautifully said. Yeah. So I have a question also about agentic AI. Okay, I, the hot topic of the, the day. The hot topic, yeah. right? I feel like 2025 yeah. is the year of um, agentic AI, agency, right? And yeah. What recommendations or advice do you have for companies that are looking at this to innovate, to move forward, to yeah. drive those efficiencies? Yeah, proceed with caution and intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Um, data intelligence and your own personal intelligence. So <laughs> uh, it is the hype curve. The problem with agents is I give them a goal and they could run away. And I talked a little about this in one of two ways. Maybe I've given them bad data and they come back and generate this report. And all of a sudden I just spent all these tokens, the currency of software consumption in the future. I spent them all getting on results that don't matter. Well, that's not good. That's a waste of time. How do I govern these agents? How long can they run for? What happens if yeah. they go into loops? So any new technology needs a governance. Get started. You have to get started. And I talk to people about use cases, my favorite three categories, automation, optimization, prediction. Start with automation internal, do something with an agent that is what I call swivel chair work. Mm -hmm. How often do you do it? How mundane is it? And how much do you hate it? And if that's an internal process, that's a great way to start and get to learn agency and Beautiful. watch it grow. Lots is coming Beautiful. down that pipe. Great, great advice of where to start. Paul, I'm always learning so much from you watching your presentation. I really appreciate its engagement with you. Yeah, and, uh, I tell it was you. It's a pleasure to meet you in person. I learned a lot from you, and I'm actually thankful for your channel because you make being a data person cool. Like, you've <laughs> made it cool. You look oh, cool. Nice. The suit's cool. And I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you as yeah. well. Cheers. Thank you. Bye, everybody.